Hello and welcome to this post-budget discussion that we have at the print. Uh, I'm TCA Sharad Raghavan, Deputy Editor, and we have a wonderful panelist, uh, a, a wonderful panel with us. Uh, we start with uh, Aditi Nair, who is a Chief Economist and Head of Research and Outreach at ICRA. And we have Ms. Shweta Saini, who is a co-founder of Arcus Policy Research. Both of them are absolutely clued into the economy. And uh, I'm sure like all of us, they, they followed the budget speech, short as it was. And uh, so they can actually break it down for us. Uh, thank you both so much for joining us. Thank you. So uh, now, Aditi, uh, I'll, I'll start with you. Uh, it looks like the highlight of the budget has been the fiscal discipline. Could you walk us through how important this actually is? The fact that they have kept to their fiscal deficit target and have set quite a challenging target for next year. Absolutely. You know, uh, this was an interim budget. And typically in an interim budget, uh, we don't look for any major policy changes. Uh, that's typically not the norm. Uh, so what we were really looking forward to were two major fiscal metrics. One is the fiscal deficit to GDP ratios that were being targeted both for this year and for next year. And within that, what was the capex that the government uh, could actually uh, pencil in? So right. on both of these counts, uh, what has come out today is better than what we had hoped for, for the revised estimates for FY24 as well as the budget estimates for FY25. Uh, so overall, uh, on these two metrics, on the quality of deficit, certainly uh, the numbers which have been announced today are very positive. Uh, we have some, uh, you know, quibbles with the fiscal math, particularly on the non-tax uh, revenue side. Uh, so we'll have to wait and watch and see how that turns out. Um, also, uh, the actual target for CapEx for FI25 at 11.1 trillion seems okay. pretty ambitious for two reasons. One, uh, you know, the full budget will come in only around July 1, presumably. Mm -hmm. And that is right in the middle of the monsoon season, which is when uh, CapEx tend to be quite tardy uh, mm -hmm. from the center and the states. So if we really end up seeing CapEx, which is very back-ended in FY25, uh, then there is a chance that this uh, number may end up being too ambitious. Similarly, while a lot of people would expect that uh, new schemes would get announced after the elections, Typically, in the first year of schemes getting announced, the outlay or rather the outgo is not very high because the scheme gets announced, then it gets notified, then the beneficiaries are found and eventually you only end up seeing a couple of quarters of actual spending happening. Right. So it's actually going to be much easier to show fiscal consolidation in FY25, whereas the full impact of uh, any new schemes that are announced will be felt in FY26. So we're really enthused by the fact that the government has chosen to go in and cut the fiscal deficit to as much as 5.1% of GDP in FY25 itself, because that leaves less sort of work to be done or less distance to be traveled in FY26 right. when the government is uh, still hoping to get uh, to the medium term target of reducing the fiscal deficit below 4.5% of GDP. Okay, uh, thanks for that. And so the FM quite categorically said that there were no tax cuts in this budget. And uh, add to this the fact that they have been quite responsible as far as their uh, fiscal targets are concerned. How much uh, of a diversion is this away from what everybody was expecting? They were thinking that, you know, this is a pre-election budget, even though it's interim in nature, the fact that it's coming just before the elections that they would spend big, but or give some sort of you know some populist measures, but here they haven't. So how significant is that? No, sir. We were not expecting any big bang announcements uh, to be made in the interim budget. Uh, it's not the norm, and uh, I think the finance minister had said that quite categorically a few weeks back that uh, this was not going to be an interim budget that would see any big announcements. Right. So while the market was still hoping against hope for uh, something to come through, I mean, I think this she made it very clear that uh, that was not going to be the case. And I'm, I'm quite uh, uh, glad to see that, uh, you know, she uh, stuck to what she had said. And uh, this was an interim budget uh, along the lines of uh, what we were expecting. Right. Okay. And uh, so now, Shweta, coming to agriculture and the rural economy, uh, there was again an expectation that the PM Kisan outgo would be increased or that the MG Narega uh, allocation would be increased. In some way, the rural economy and agriculture would be given a push because 
the monsoon has been erratic and the sector hasn't really been doing that well. That doesn't really seem to have materialized. Is that fiscal discipline or is that a miss? So, you know, apart from uh, the climatic and the weather problems that the farmers have really suffered and also because of the large number of policy actions that have had uh, intrinsic consumer bias and therefore the farmers did suffer in the last year and a half because of a uh, lot of supply augmenting uh, actions. We were hoping that because in the recent state elections, they had mentioned a lot about MSP, about farm women farmers getting a lot of benefits. Right. And many of those promises have not been delivered and partially been delivered in some states. So the example classic in that uh, scenario is the wheat MSP, wherein Rajasthan has just announced that against an MSP of 2275, they'll be giving a 2400 MSP. Right. The promise was for 2400. Now, it's intriguing to see that if Rajasthan does a higher MSP and there is an adjustment BJP state and that gives a lower MSP. So we weren't sure how this would play out politically. And therefore, we were more than certain that in this interim budget, they would announce something for the rural sector. But clearly, we see it's a miss, but uh, that's also because I'm picking from what are they saying, that they're sticking to fiscal consolidation map. But I see a lot happening towards July. So when the July budget comes in, this would come in. The stress in the rural sector is palpable. There is no doubt about it. So mm -hmm. therefore, we do. And besides, we were certain that farmers and women farmers particularly would be central theme. But then nothing really has come about. 2019 budget with PM Kisan exa uh, example was very, very um, encouraging for us. So we were sure that they will announce something, but nothing really has come about. So it's been a disappointment, but uh, it's an interim budget. So only as much could we expect. Sure. But I understand that it's an interim budget. But uh, does the rural economy have the bandwidth to wait another four months before the next budget comes, the full budget comes? So, you know, uh, how, how do we define a bandwidth? So farmers have been suffering because temperatures rise, wheat crops fall. They are suffering because you have lower import duties and because of which your oil seeds will suffer, for example, your own mustard. And so I mean, farmers would suffer. So, yes, there are uh, uh, clearly uh, signs of distress. Real rural wages are falling. Mm -hmm. And therefore, nothing really has come about it. But then, um, as history has it, there have been announcements outside of budget also, which has addressed a lot of uh, uh, problems like that. But uh, I, I expected that uh, some actions will be taken, but they've stuck to more development and lesser to welfare in case of rural. And therefore, they've mentioned a lot about logistics. They've given promises on green energy and ethanol has been given a lot of funding. So they have put in money in terms of investments and future looking. But of course, the welfare does seem to have lapsed. Yeah. Right. And so now uh, going back to the uh, developmental side, uh, Aditi, they have increased the capital expenditure budget by 11%. Now it's 11.1 lakh crore, which is quite a large number, but 11% is still the lowest hike in the last three years. It was a hike 50% and 33% and now 11%. And the FM herself mentioned that the private sector seems to be coming in. And so they, uh, the government might be pulling back a bit to allow private sector investment to also come in. Do you feel that this is a kind of a medium term signal that the government is giving that the economy shouldn't rely on this big government capex push for too much longer? So Sharad, it's 11% over last of over the current year's budget estimate, but it's a higher number over uh, the revised estimate. So uh, the capex was budgeted at 10 trillion for this year. That's been reduced to nine and a half trillion. Yeah. And uh, the budget estimate for next year is 11.1. .1, so we need to actually compare it to 9.5, not to 10. And then the growth is uh, significantly higher. It's about 17% or so. Yes, it's still lower than the numbers we've been used to over the last few years. But with the base effect, uh, you know, we, we're not going to be able to sustain 20-30% kind of growth numbers year after year if we expect any fiscal consolidation uh, to happen in a meaningful manner. Uh, so, uh, incidentally, we had lower estimates for uh, capex for FI24 and FI25. So this number is higher than what we were uh, uh, penciling in. Uh, so that's a positive. But as I said, it may be difficult to achieve in FI25 given the elections uh, and the uh, you know later presentation of the final budget, etc. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as private capex is concerned, uh, 
certainly there are signs of uh, private capex uh, in certain sectors mm-hmm. our uh, conjecture is that uh, this is going to be a private capex cycle which is going to be more uh, sort of realistic and not very big bang uh, the way that perhaps earlier capex cycles were overall a lot of ingredients are in place for uh, private sector to want to add capacity in a number of different uh, areas uh we are seeing capacity utilization close to that 75% mark after which the private sector does start to announce capacity expansion we're pretty much sitting on top of the rate uh, cycle and uh, rate cuts are you know uh likely in the foreseeable future mm-hmm. our forecast is that the npc will start cutting rates by uh, august latest uh, by october and that it will be a shallow rate cut cycle of 50 to 75 basis points so it's not like rate cards are very distant or that they're going to be very sharp which would be a reason for someone to wait or to go ahead and uh, start adding capacity so you know a lot of these are very positive uh, factors and uh, we are hopeful that uh, the private capex cycle will uh, continue to broaden but we're not expecting it to be a very loud uh, kind of a capex cycle the way that it may have been in the past okay and uh, shweta one of the things that they announced to do with agriculture was that they would do nano dap uh, fertilizers so i just wanted to check with you how successful has nano urea been so you know we've uh, repeatedly written about it shara that uh, and uh, also it comes from our own field meetings with farmers where they have been quite literally forced to buy it and being told that you have to apply it so from carrying it to mixing it to applying it at the roots is absolutely tough for the farmer the impacts in the yield have also not been documented so one of the things that we've been continuously writing is that we should undertake a unbiased scientific query into it but from what we see it they do not appear to be effective in terms of um, farmers ease to use it and the impacts on yield so therefore that was questionable now they've even introduced this So of course there are ambitions that they declare every year and newer ambitions get pushed every year in the budget. Right. So uh, we don't see much of take happening there but as an announcement they're bringing up that they want to convert a heavier bag into a liquid and therefore have a concentrate sold. So these are good intentions we'll have to wait how it plays out but there have been many like this in earlier budgets also so not much traction to us. Okay. And they've also uh, there was quite a lot of focus on fisheries and matsya sampada and all of that now this is not the first time that they've talked about it compared to previous budgets i mean after that and in the atmanirbhar bharat package also i think there was a pm matsya 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 sampada yojana i mean has there been any movement on the ground regarding fisheries so you know there are two types of fisheries inland coastal right. so uh, we see that uh, as a scheme it's really picked up in at least the eastern indian states of bihar odisha of course has coastal line but even inland fishery in uh, odisha is picking up really well we know a lot of it picking up in up so clearly fisheries is amongst the most important items in our agricultural export baskets the yields have been low there have been problems with their logistic movement so much of that gets addressed via schemes like this and i think it's a welcome step it's a low hanging opportunity for a country like us wherein we have ports and of course they've uh, they've uh, committed to invest in ports and logistics in this budget also so i see overall and dairy for example as two allied activities which which would go a long way in doubling farmers income if we use that phrase so allied activities are important so fisheries clearly and dairy okay and so now uh, i mean i have an all women panel and so i'm going to use this wonderful opportunity to ask this question one of the four casts that the government said that it was going to focus on is uh, is mahila the the woman and but the thing is that in the speech at least uh, while the fm focused a lot on what has already been done there were no fresh announcements made for schemes relating to women uh, or any way to help them so now i'll start with you aditi i'm going to ask this to both of you but uh, aditi i mean is there something that you would have hoped to have seen uh, in the budget well like i said earlier in the interim budget we had no expectations that any major policy announcements would come through so um, you know that's uh, where we stand okay and uh, uh, shweta So you know um in terms of agriculture dairy is one of the sectors that has the largest uh, women participation 
So uh, with with a with a um, thrust on dairy and uh, improving the yields of milch animals, it's it's a good good. uh start they are i mean i may not call it as optics but then there are announcements about drone didi so there is namo yes. drone didi now that says 15000 drones to sg women women led sgs so uh clearly uh there are optics which is good but we'll have to see how it plays out and uh, i mean i always personally have a problem when we are counted as vulnerable people we're not vulnerable as women i mean and then on top of it if if they've created a new caste as as the phrase now that's little uh, i mean of course had it been economic vulnerability that also did make sense but counting youth under a caste also so i mean these are words and uh, so i don't make uh, read too much into it but as women they've put in some optics there let's see how it plays out right and you actually mentioned an interesting point they were talking about improving the productivity of our cows is this the first time that uh, the government has actually admitted that our cows are not that productive uh, milk yielders so no uh, sharad it's been a constant issue also in terms of our own milk production but also in terms of emissions that these milk animals have mm-hmm. and the implication they have on the feed requirement and the efficiency there so overall the discussion about uh, uh, lower yields of our milk animals has been thing since gokul mission was also created the last last time so it's it's been on the radar and uh, livestock sector continues to be uh, critical for for india so improving on yields by getting access to subsidized semen and other uh, insemination techniques have been there so they are constantly working on it and we we see that this momentum would continue all right so okay so now final question on a scale of 5 and 5 being that the budget has ticked all of your boxes and 0 being that it has ticked none of them uh how would you rate it aditi uh, you first no this this is what an interim budget should have been so uh, uh you know a statement of in any case budgets are meant to be a statement of account of revenues and expenditures uh, in india we tend to have magnified expectations from every budget that they're going to uh, you know be the one day where uh, maximum amount of policy announcement state place that's not what budget day technically should be and certainly not what an interim budget day should be so uh, i would say that uh, the brief uh, for an interim budget was met today cool so 515 i didn't say that you did i'm just saying uh, that um, yeah. the brief was met all right and uh, shweta you know um i was certain they'd announce something also because 2019 they retrospectively applied pm kisan and the problems were there so right. i mean uh, i wish i could refrain also by giving a rank but then in case i'm really forced to i'd probably just do a two and a half okay all right so that's that's quite a a varied picture there but uh, on that note thank you both so much for joining us this was very very insightful and in a short time we actually covered i think mostly everything that the budget had to offer so thank you both so much for joining us